Hi, I'm Tommy Thomas. I want to welcome you back to the show, How to Beat the Odds. You know, I just met our guest a couple hours ago. Dennis and Lane Head, friends of ours, called, and, and they said, hey, he's going to come by. And, and I said, well, I want to meet him because I've been hearing what they've been telling me about him. And what they've been saying is that he's got a cross out there on his truck. And he'll take that cross, and he'll walk around different parts of America and pray and intercede for people. He left everything, family and everything to follow God's perfect will for his life. And that's what God told him to do. And everywhere he goes, we've got pictures of teenagers and folks. Here's somebody in a wheelchair and he's got the cross and he takes pictures with them. And he'll meet these people and he'll have a word from the Lord from them. God will heal and do miracles. He's made himself available, forsaken all. But not only that, I mean, he had amnesia, dementia, he fell, he was paralyzed for a while. All these different things came against him. But God would continue to raise him up for his purpose, and God's used him. It's a powerful testimony of, of how he's taken this cross and being obedient to the Lord and trusting him for finances and everything. No big church or organization is saying, here, here's money every month. No. Trust God everywhere he goes. Daily bread. Everywhere, daily bread. Never see God's children forsaken or begging bread. And this is a perfect example of that. That he totally trusts the Lord and the Lord has never let him down. And he'll never let you or me down either. He's that kind of God. He loves all of us. Let's meet him right now. John, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Man, this article right here. Now, this was done in Oakmuggy. Is uh -huh. that how you say it? Oak Oklahoma. And this is an awesome article. And uh, I'll have a picture of that put up and all, and uh, we'll have a DVD available of this show, and the article will be in there, and some other things that you can read about, and some of the pictures and all. But God has really called you to take this cross and tells you where to go, and you'll put that cross down and put some water every mile, and you'll just hitchhike back and walk 10, 20 miles with that cross. It's amazing, isn't it? It's fantastic. It's wonderful what God does when we can listen to Him and present ourselves as a sacrifice for His glory. And when people see that cross, I mean, teenagers and people, they all want to stop and talk to you, and, and you can speak the word of the Lord in their lives. Amen. They love it. They love it. The glory of God comes down, and uh, there's something about seeing that, that, that rugged cross that just breaks all unforgiveness, all pain and all anger. Just the Holy Spirit can minister to people. It's just incredible. Well, you told me one guy was going along or something, and he saw the darkness being divided by the cross. What was that deal? was carrying the cross in uh, New Mexico, and uh, <clears throat> the cross represents the physical appearance, but it also represents spiritual warfare for the territories that God brings me to. And I was carrying it west along the I-10 freeway in New Mexico, and uh, this man, he came up behind me and he honked his horn. I was on the, on the side of the freeway, and uh, I stopped and he came over to me and he said, you know, a few minutes ago I was going the other way on the freeway and I looked real quick and I could see the cross, the cross cutting through the spirit world, tearing down the kingdom of God, darkness. It was just incredible and I had just a quick vision of it and I wanted to come and share that with you and just let you know that I saw in the spirit what the cross was doing. God wanted you to know that. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, I know angels are with you. I mean, God just takes care of you, doesn't he? It's fantastic. I've got incredible testimonies. I've got documented miracles. And, you know, just to be able to have God re trust me so much to be able to go out there and, and go to the middle of nowhere with, with very, very little gasoline or very little finances and just let the angels and the Holy Spirit bring everything as the cross goes through the land. It's fantastic. Now, when you were in Okamogi, I mean, you were up there and the Lord said, go 15 miles out in the middle of nowhere. God said, go drive 20 miles east in the middle of nowhere in the night. <clears throat> and uh, I didn't know where I was going. I'm a Holy Spirit missionary and I'm always guided by the hand of the Holy Spirit and the right. angels. And I just go places. <clears throat> and God always has a purpose for it. And he took me to a small town called Boynton. And I'd never been there before. It's like a half it's like a half town, you know. There's like one stop sign or something like that and a school and some churches. And God led me to a church, an Assemblies of God church, and it's Pastor Cecil, and I forget his last name. And uh, it was a Tuesday night and I came back on Wednesday and they were having a, a church social. They were having a Valentine's dinner. So I stayed and talked to Pastor Cecil for a while and uh, 
then I went back to uh, Pastor Lyndon Adams' house in Okmulgee. And I knew this weekend that I was, this, this weekend Saturday, I was coming to Dallas, but I didn't know where I was going to stay and who I was going to stay with. And uh, I got taken to a ministry called Blueberry Hill. It's over in uh, South Dallas. And uh, Pastor Leo Pilkington and his wife Barbara, they run it. It's a home that people are traveling they can come stay in. What an awesome ministry that is. Amen. It's wonderful. Yeah. And they're hosting me with from Dennis and Elaine. I thank you, Dennis and Elaine. God Dennis bless and you. Elaine head over in Dallas. Yeah. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> I started talking to Pastor Leo, and he's in his 70s or 80s. He's had some time together. He's been with Billy Graham, R.W. Shambach, and everything. And I told him, you know, I was in Oak Mogi. He said, you were in Oak Mogi? I said, yeah, I was there. I just came from Oak Mogi. He said... Well, I grew up 20 miles east of Okmulgee. And I said, you grew up 20 miles east of Okmulgee? And he said, yeah. And I said, you grew up in Boynton? And he said, I grew up in Boynton. And he explained to me that his dad built a church in Okmulgee. And when the Lord told you to drive out in the country and stop right out there where the church was? Right there where the church was. And not only that, but he and Cecil are best friends. No. They've known each other since 1939. They've gone around doing uh, revivals and evangelizing all over the United States together for years and years and years. And that was God's way of letting me know, hey, drive out to Oak Mogi, meet Cecil, drive out to Dallas, and you're going to meet Pastor Leo. God connects the dots. Amen. I tell the <laughs> angels love to play connect the dot. They love to paint a glorious picture for God. They do, don't they? Amen. Amen. So now you know you're staying right where God wants you to stay. So you're right with the people He wants you to be with. Amen. It made me feel really comfortable because i got to make sure I'm safe. Yeah, amen to that. Amen. Well, now you out, raised out in California around San Diego. I know the weather's terrible out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there one time. I couldn't believe how nice it is out there. It's a beautiful place. Yes, it is. Okay, your mom, Dad, what's your mom's name? My mom's Margaret Virginia, and I love her so. Okay. Amen. I'm her baby, John. Okay. And uh, hi, Mom. I love you. And uh, Mom was Pentecostal and Dad was Catholic. Mom was Pentecostal and Dad was Catholic. And back in the 70s, that was like fire and ice. <laughs> <laughs> it was, wasn't it? It was well, tough. What happened when you was three years old? You actually asked Jesus to come in? What? When I was three years old, my mom led me to Jesus. It was wonderful. And then, and then a few years later, you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost? When I was in third grade, I got baptized by the Holy Spirit and started talking in tongues. Boy, Mama was right there, and God wasn't wasting any time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, Dad was a little more religious. Dad was Catholic. Okay. And uh, back, it, was, it made for an interesting combination. I didn't quite understand the dynamics as a, as a kid. But my mom would take me to church one week, and my dad would take me to church another week, and back and forth it went on for a few years. And then one day my dad came to me and said, Son, I need to know, whose church do you like more? Your mom and those Pentecostal people? or the Catholic Church and the sacrament. And I thought about it. I said, Jesus loves me, this I know, or hail Mary full of grace. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, i got to go with Mom and those Pentecostal people. And he was devastated. This is who do you love more question. And he said, Son, why? Why don't you, don't you want to go to church with me in the Catholic Church? And I said, Dad, potluck Sundays, all those old ladies, all those recipes, all that good food. All the desserts. All the desserts. I go to church with you, I get that piece of bread in my mouth, you know. <laughs> I didn't understand. Right. <laughs> but it's just a glorious thing. I love going to Mass. I love the Catholic Church. I love the right. Pentecostal Church. And God's just yeah. wonderful wherever we go. There's a place for everybody, isn't there? Amen. Amen. Amen.